so I decided to put the whole Geno out and play with my pole a little bit. Ew. Yeah, this is gonna sound like really harsh to Matt, but he can admit these weren't great ideas. I got big dreams here. I got really big dreams here. It's like, eh, 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 eh. I'm done with those. Through with those. I'm Kristen, and this is Matt. We've spent the last four years sailing our $5,000 Craigslist boat to some of the most beautiful places in the Caribbean. From spearfishing in South Andros, Bahamas, staying in a treehouse and riding horses through the rainforest of the Dominican Republic, to even dodging hurricanes in Puerto Rico. We could have never imagined what this adventure would become. After gaining more sailing experience, we knew we had to make some serious upgrades to our boat if we wanted to keep this journey going. Unfortunately now, our engine is no longer working. We'll be back in the boatyard for a while. But before we set up on the hard, we wanted to test our skills by sailing engineless around the Caribbean. What's up guys? Welcome back to Sailing GBU. Today we feel like hot messes. We didn't sleep well last night. This anchorage was really rolly and we have an old boat, so it just creaks and cracks and just it's pretty it's pretty bad. But we're getting up, we're going sailing, we're hitting our last anchorage before we get to the boat yard, and we're sailing back to Culebra. Yep, back to Culebra. That was the understatement of a century. Usually we're roll savages, but this was like just too ridiculous. We took the furthest mooring ball out because we don't have a motor, and we paid for it all night long. Three hours of sleep, even Bear couldn't sleep. She slept outside and says, this is ridiculous, y'all. <laughs> So yeah, no sleep, and now I have to sail the farthest downwind that I've ever sailed. It's going to be like a 22 nautical mile sail downwind, so I'm not that practiced on downwind sailing. So it could be some hurdles to go through today, but I'm excited to get back there, get to a calm anchorage and get some sleep tonight. That's going to be fun, and then uh, just boogie down the road. Sailing downwind today, this morning, the winds are a little bit light, so I decided to put the whole Geno out and play with my pole a little bit. Ew. <laughs> We're pole dancers out here. Yeah, I put it out there just to check. I think later the wind's gonna fill in and I'll be able to just use the main and a little bit of stay sail for balance and still be able to rip along at four knots or so. But I put the pole out, I'm pretty happy because we went from 1.7 knots to 3.4, 4.2 knots going in a dead straight line to where we're going. So that's kind of cool. It's pretty gentle. We're not in any swell yet. But uh, yeah, I didn't like look up how to do it with the pole or attach anything. One, because my pole's like old and rusty. Sorry guys, I'm talking about my pole a lot. My, uh, what's it called? A whisker pole. I'll say whisker, that makes it sound better. My whisker pole. And uh, I just kind of thought about how to set it up and I just did it on my own. So I'll see if I mess anything up throughout the day. So we've been sailing now for a couple hours. We're going at a pretty good speed. What are we going, like six knots? Five? Six, six right now. We're going anywhere between 4.5 and 6.5. So we're speeding right along. It's a beautiful day. This makes up for having a bad night last night. Sun shining, no storms like we normally have around these areas. So I'm enjoying myself on this sail. I wish everyone could be on this boat with us right now. Obviously it would sink if that happened. But if one or two of you could be on this boat, you'd see how beautiful. Are you feeling better? You got your little shader up so you're not getting burnt? Bro, I was getting smoked earlier. I could probably take it all the way down now because the, the sun's up higher. But boy, that sun was hot this morning. There was like no wind and I was getting burnt. So I put the shader up. But so far, so good. 
it's been a nice little sail so far. We're about halfway, coming up to just at the halfway point. So, you slow know. ride, take it easy. Slow ride, <laughs> take it easy. But seriously, I think even if we go two miles an hour for the rest of the time, we'll still be there in five hours. Just we'll still put us there before sundown. So everything's going good. We got some storms coming up on our right side here and the wind's starting to pick up. Yep, I'm gonna have to change some sail plants here, getting some low pressures, and I think we gotta safety up this bugger a little bit. <laughs> So I went and got my pole out of there. I was really happy that I had the whisker pole up um, because it let me go dead downwind for like the first three hours of this trip and I was able to eat up some, some mileage. But I got it out of there because with these gusts, it was getting a little too violent. The last thing I wanted was something big and hard flying around hitting me in the head. Yeah, the whisker pole seems, if that goes wrong, there could be big problems. Yeah, and I'm not a whisker pole pro, so I was like, you know what, let me just get this down. But now we needed to go a little bit more south, so now I just have a little bit of head sail out, maybe to my first reef, and then I have my main sheet eased out a little bit, so I'm able to handle the gusts pretty good right now, and uh, I'm still feeling good about it, 5.8 knots, so feeling good. Everything's going smooth. So we're coming into Culebra. We put our head sail back in and now we pulled up our stay sail and the storm's kind of changing our wind direction so we're kind of have to play it by ear but the water just turned beautifully crystal clear at the reefs around this beginning. We're going over some of them and it was just beautiful. And then I said, yeah, it's only seven feet deep right there. And she said, oh my God, don't you usually avoid shoals like the plague? And I said, baby. I don't think I talked with that accent, but okay. She said, oh, I'm bewildered how heavenly of a sail to do this. And then I said, hey, she said, why you sail over that short? And I said, baby, because I'm a thug. Ah, ah, ah. So as you can see, it's beautiful panoramic, beautiful blue skies. And right where I have to go into a pretty tight channel, it's this freaking rain again. I don't know what this dark cloud is that's following me around. Please tell me what I did because I am not having it. This is not the kind of channel where you can afford to wind completely die on you here. So I'm like, it looks like it's moving pretty fast, whatever. I don't hold, hold on to your britches. You, you got this under control. I'm a bit wind blasted. Matt's putting on the outboard right now to the dinghy and 
I'm happy. We are here in Culebra. We're in our safe anchorage. If you guys watch our videos before, you know what anchorage we're in. And today was a really great sale. I have to have a future husband appreciation post. <laughs> Is that what people call it? I don't know. On how great Matt did today sailing. You know, he was tired. I was tired this morning. He even made me a lunch wrap before we left so I wouldn't get hungry during the sale. And with every sale change that he did, we just kept blazing through on the wind. So today was a really great sale in my opinion. And I'm just really thankful for Matt, my captain. <laughs> All right guys, I wanna take a quick break from this video to share with you guys an online language learning school that I've been taking classes in recently. So most of us know on this channel, I've been living in the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico for the last three years, and in that time, I thought my Spanish was getting pretty good. After taking these courses, I figured out that I have a lot more left to learn. One of my favorite things about the program is that they not only offer one-on-one -on -one classes for you to explore like any personal questions you may have, but they also have group settings. It's really, really fun to get in like a Zoom call and learn with three or four other people because there's varying levels of experience. If you're learning one-on-one -on -one with a tutor, sometimes you can feel the pressure of that. But when you see other people making mistakes and your peers struggling to get through it, it really kind of helps you feel confident and motivated to keep going and keep learning. One really cool thing is the teachers are native speaking teachers. So you're gonna pick up accents and little, little, little tiny treats to help you out. So they have a couple different options for the program you want to take. They have a monthly that's going to give you the versatility to learn when you want to, learn on your own time, and it also gives you the flexibility to cancel whenever you would need to. And they also have my favorite, the marathon program. As we all know, I'm a marathon man. I like to get into it and get it done. The marathon program is a three to 12 month program where if you can commit to learning 90% of the lesson plans, they'll give you a chance to earn some cash back. Use the link below for up to 40% off. Get on over to Lingoda, check them out, and learn some Spanish so that you can hablar conmigo. I think that's how you say it. All right, so now that we know that, let's get back to the video. Okay, guys, so now that we're in Culebra, the countdown begins until our repowering. And we talked to you guys in a previous video. We said, should we go all out? Should we do pretty much an interior refit? Fix all those nagging things that we've been just living with because we're like, this isn't probably our forever boat. And just commit to this being our forever boat and redoing all of them? So the decision has been made. We're gonna go ahead and commit. We are committed to our this forever boat. boat. This is gonna be our forever <laughs> boat. It's our temporary forever boat. Who knows if it's gonna be forever. Does that make sense? No, but. You know, forever can be a long time. So, but for now <laughs> we're approaching it like it's gonna be our forever boat. And we have so many things that we have to fix. So many little nagging things that we just been living with over the past few years. And you know, we're setting the bar a little bit higher. We did some gangster ghetto engineering. We cut a lot of corners getting this far. And I realized that you're just punishing yourself. Cutting corners for sailing. Sailing ain't really for like, you know, it ain't for cutting corners. It's for putting the whole corner on. Well, and leaving we, it intact. To be fair though, we had to cut the corners. We didn't have the money not to cut the corners. Yeah. So anyways, we're stepping things up. We're making our lives better. All those things that's just annoying throughout our lives that we've just been eating, we're not gonna eat them anymore. So let's go around the boat and let's start showing you some things that we're gonna be changing around this. I almost said that bad word. And we need your help. <laughs> we still have some questions. We got a few ups and downs, a few yes or no's we that need we your need help. your help for. All right, so one of the first things first that we got to get into, this was a big catalyst to doing a refit on the interior. Obviously we have to come back for our engine, but there's another huge problem structurally with this boat and that is our bulkheads. As you can hear right here, pretty creaky. This is just like a veneer that I put over this because the bulkheads were like half rotten when I very first got the boat. But that's going to be its own whole series. So we're going to get into that and Sandy later. I'm not going to bore you with it today, but bulkheads are getting redone. So let's get our thinking caps on because I have no idea how to do bulkheads. They're so old and blown out and I put this boat through so much stress that all the cabinets are breaking apart and coming apart. And they're so dang creaky when I'm at these rolling anchorages that you can see that I shove shims in there. Chopsticks, kebab sticks, oh, old God. screws, just the to keep the embarrassing truth. The embarrassing truth, you know, you got to do what you got to do to get by to get some sleep on this boat, but yeah, that's a big problem that I can't wait to get into head on and get that 
get a sleepy boat, get a quiet boat. You know, I, I'm excited for that. Next is our bathroom. When we re-put in a new toilet, we got an electric toilet, still feels like luxury. Every time I hit that flush, we had to change a lot of things, rip some things out to get the manual head out and put the new one in. And different things that we've upgraded at the originally have kind of rotted, wasn't good for the shower area getting wet and we decided we need to redo a lot of that matt needs to fiberglass some of the shower that's kind of coming apart i really don't know what we're gonna do in there uh, have you guys had luck with stick on tile i don't know is that i feel like at first when that came out it was pretty crappy maybe now it's upgraded let me know if anyone's bought that down below in the comments and also we are going to be getting a washing machine and i'm deciding and i didn't want to do this but i'm deciding on a wall mounted washing machine i've seen a few people on sailboats get them and it is kind of expensive and if it doesn't work i'm going to be really i don't want to say the word but i'm going to be really angry so for you guys i'm going to be testing out a wall mounted washing machine i'm going to try to fit it in here i saw someone on pinterest or somebody i don't remember who who knocked out this area right now we just have towels and cleaning products and stupid stuff in there we can put somewhere else and we'll put it back there and I'm hoping it's gonna work and I'm gonna relay the message back to you guys if it works because if it does it's the best thing you can possibly get on a boat that's like 40 feet and under without getting a giant washing machine or one of those ones the manual kind that everyone says are horrible so stay tuned for that this next portion here is something that I'm definitely gonna do and I have some really good ideas on how to do it. As we all know, in a uh, boat this size, we only have really one cabin. That's the V-berth. And even though we both fit in there and we sleep in there, and I'm very charming, sometimes I get kicked out of the V-berth and I get banished to the salon. Whether It's, <laughs> it's just, not true. It's just because it's hot. Whether it's hot, whether it's bad weather, whether I've been popping off of the mouth too much, <laughs> you never know. So sometimes I get sent out here to sleep on the couch, as we all do. And my couch is a horrible couch. I don't know if your couch is comfy but mine is terrible first things first thin squished foam and just the setup is t horrible let me show it to you now so this is my couch or my settee if you're particular about boat terms and basically the way it works is this part folds down you put a little slat in there like the thanksgiving leaflet and this sits here and it makes, I don't know, a twin, maybe a little bit smaller than a full-size bed. Only problem, though, is that when we go to the rolly anchorages, rant, 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 this will just slide out, and then I'm the taco meat that falls through the crack and just ends <laughs> up on the floor. So it's the taco not, meat? I'm the taco meat. So basically what happens is it's terribly uncomfortable. you got to sleep in this weird crack. It's horrible. So what I'm going to do is build this, like, one solid tray that I can fold out and then this little notch here is going to hold the whole tray in place so that I don't slide around and I can get a comfy night's sleep. Basically, in short terms, he's going to make pretty much a futon, but one cushion, and it's going to easily slide in and out. It's going to be a slide in, slide out, and it's going to be stationary. And I'm going to get some thicker foam, too. So, you know, if you don't see the bags under my eyes anymore and I'm looking fresh as a daisy, you'll know why. We're in the galley. I got big dreams here. I got really big dreams here. Now, it really depends on how much money I'm gonna spend, but first off, I'm ready for a new stove and oven situation. Basically, if you guys are new on the channel, or you guys might remember, Matt has taken a camping stove and put it in the top of this because the top wasn't working anymore, so we fixed that, but the oven has never worked. and. You know it doesn't it's not gimbaled properly so basically long story short i'm ready for a new stove now there's not many options they have these days online so if you have a favorite one let me know we don't have much room here so i can't do a three burner or four burner and get crazy like that so pretty much a two burner so if you have a favorite two burner leave it down below next i really want to fix these drawers a lot of our drawers here are just like wood like a caveman built them they don't have hardware they don't slide in and out it's like eh, 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 which is great on a boat because it, they get so stuck they never open while you sail and you don't have to latch them but you know what i'm done with those through with those and next i want to do new countertops we put in the cheapest crap you could probably get at home depot 
Matt didn't really know what he was doing. Some parts cracked. I want to redo that. So we're thinking about making a wood slab type of countertop or Corian, I think. A lot of people do that also. So vote down below. Tell me what you think is a good idea. Tell me wood's crap or that other stuff is crap. Let me know. And then I think I want to do a different sink, like smaller sink to give myself more counter. I don't need a two thingy sink. What is it called, Matt? It's a dual sink. Dual. I don't need a dual sink. I just want like a one small one. Do a little bit of your dishes and you're done. So, and this is gonna go too. This thing's too big. We got this. I was excited. It's gonna go. Frankie Fresh fridge time. Obviously we got this uh, apartment fridge and we love this. So now I need to build in a counter space to control this thing. Because when we sail, sometimes she flops around and we just strap her down. This was one of the catalysts to doing the kitchen refit was because we have to obviously make something better for this. So I plan on building a counter here to match the kitchen, tighten all that in nice and deep like, and then uh, make some drawers here too. In the V-Birth, this is my oasis. This is my study room. My study room, I don't think I've ever said that before. My office, I guess is what it's called. I want to upgrade my storage right now. I have my shell collection and a whole bunch of like junk that it's okay to get dirty because this cabin tree doesn't have a back. It goes to the anchor locker, which gets dirty and can get wet. So I want to revamp this. I should, I should say I want Matt to because I'm not going to be revamping it. I want Matt to revamp this, give me more storage and make it a better situation. So I was watching sailing YouTube the other day, as many of us do, and I saw this guy walking around his boat with a camera and I just saw the wheel going like this, moving by itself. And I said, dang, he got a ghost on that boat driving that thing for him. And after some more investigation, I found out there's this cool thing called autopilot where there's this mechanism that drives your boat for you so you don't have to. And I've decided that I'm not leaving without an autopilot. I'm gonna have my new engine and I'm gonna have the autopilot too. There's basically two types of autopilots. There's the old standard linear drive, which gets uh, installed internally and kind of drives your quadrant. And then there's this one that I found, which goes on, which installs into the exterior right around the pulpit. And then it drives with like a wheel. We had an old one that was a little bit too small and it never really would drive our boat. So we never got to use it. This one's a little more robust. It's for steering bigger, heavier boats. So I think that that one for ease of install and obviously price as well is going to be the one that we're going to go with. And then I think to enclose it, I think I might build a new pulpit system. Obviously this one got destroyed. As soon as we got done painting our boat, all of our steering cables went out. We broke our steering, our shifter cables all broke. So I was working on that and I destroyed it with my filthy hands. So I might design a whole new pulpit system to give the whole cockpit a sleeker, more modern look. One of the final things that we've been putting off our entire lives, we thought about doing them the last time we took the boat out of the water and we said, no, let's just keep going, is our horrible port lights, if you could even call them that. Basically, the guy who had our boat before had them sh shut with, what is this map? Plexiglass. Plexiglass stained, but they're all shattered. You can't really see out of them that well. And this one has a giant crack. It's about to pretty much fall out the side of a boat. This one, you can see the frame is cracked. Basically, Matt decided to cut off the inside part of the port light, frame it with some... Yeah, this is going to sound like really harsh to Matt, but he can admit these weren't great ideas, but we neither of us knew any better. So it wasn't like I was coming up with great ideas cracked piece of wood that obviously these leak and it's filled with drywall goo. I don't even know what it's called. Basically they leak and they're all deteriorating and they're all falling apart and it needs to be all redone. Yeah, I used quarter inch plywood to frame it, which got destroyed for the first leak. I used drywall mud on the inside to smooth it out and ferret, which looked really great when I was first done with them for about 20 seconds, then it all died. So there's gonna be many more projects that we probably didn't even tell about, but if you guys have redone a boat or if you've had maybe RV type of redoing things, let us know some tips, tricks, some cool things that you guys have used and that's pretty much it and we're gonna be sailing off soon pretty much any day now to go back to Isleta Marina we're gonna hope to get an Airbnb and we're gonna start popping off with this 
what is what do we call this a refit interior refit. refit and should i release a series of exercise videos called the stay fit refit <laughs> where i show like exercises of sanding like the wax on wax off i don't think you should do that stay fit refit but if you're it. wondering about our engine it says it's going to come at the end of december maybe january so we're going to have the time to do our interior refit and then we're going to get into the engine and then we got a brand new boat so make sure you guys subscribe if you're new here like and comment as always and we'll see you next week bye